What's going on everybody? My name is Emmanuel. Today I'm going to show you how I currently digitally color a piece. So I'm going to get right into it. Uh, for today I am not going to be using Photoshop. I'm going to be using an app called Medibang Paint Pro. And this this app is free and it's pretty much multi-platform so here I just have a circle and I am just going to fill this circle okay so we have our little a flat color circle now the first thing first key thing I want you to keep in mind that when when coloring and or drawing coloring in 2d space you're usually drawing a 3d object so I just want to quickly discuss lighting um, usually the basic lighting especially in photography is three-point lighting so you'll have your your key light which is basically your main light so so this is our key light so that's our main light then you'll have your second light will usually be a a fill light and then you might have in the background a backlight or rim light so these this is usually the setup you you will always have a key light and you'll have a fill light the rim backlight you can have it's up to you but it usually helps separate whatever you're coloring uh, from the background even if there's no background it still helps separate it from the background so it's going to do a quick shading just kind of show you how how these work so your your key light is going to be the light that that covers you know it's wherever it's, it's pointed it's going to cover that area and if it's kind of like a spotlight, it's going to have like a hot spot on it, which is going to be the brightest spot where the light hits. Right? So that's what the key light does. And then your fill light is going, is going to add light basically in the, the, the areas that are completely in shadow so it then removes you know the extra hard shadows and kind of removes the menacing look so that's what you feel like does. Like, like it says it, it, it fills the rest of the space and then what your what your backlight is going to do is basically how its name implies it's behind uh, it's behind the subject so I'm actually gonna put a color on this so you can see it so I'm just gonna get a bright green and what the backlight does it it basically does create like a rim light so this backlight is say to the right behind this ball so it's basically going to create the, it's, go, it's going to create a rim light around the outside of this ball And it's not it's not gonna be big, it's not gonna, you know, because no, it's it's behind and it's just it just basically creates like an outline. 
around around your object and and usually and if this is just my preference like if the rim light is the opposite of you know the the, the key light area then it kind of it kind of adds a more leveling out like a nice appearance but so this is something quick just just to give give y'all an, an idea you know especially if you don't know light lighting that much because I know some of you probably do and but I know some of you don't or some of you need a refresher so so again your main light is your key light your second light is your field light and the third is your back light or rim light all right so the illustration I'm working on with you guys today is Steve Oni. I know I'll probably pronounce wrong, wrong um, from Steven Universe. So I already have a reference. Uh, the only thing that I decided to change is I like um, I'm, I'm keeping everything, but I'm opted out this hairstyle for the the one where she has the um, the hiking bag um, on her back, just because I, I like I like that. Um, and one thing that can help make a piece stand out is if you have asymmetrical stuff. So this is asymmetrical. Usually the first thing I do is I first decide my my lights where I want to place my lights. And I know since her head is tilting this way a bit, um, I want the light coming from this direction. The main light coming from that direction, so that's the main light, and I know I'm going to have a, um, you know, field light that's going to cover whatever from from this angle, and then I'm probably going to put a back field light, um, still probably on this side somewhere. Um, when I do back fields, back field lighting, I, I say that for last when the the illustration is pretty much done. Because as you complete, as you color, fill things in, change things, then the whole look uh, changes. So, and after deciding that, then next I'm gonna start with the skin since that's gonna be the the, the biggest part. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill that in with a flat color, and I'll be right back once I do that. Okay, now that I have I have placed the flat skin color, you're already thinking, why are you place it so dark? She uh, she is a, a person of color, but you got it too dark. This is where preference comes in. You can either work from light to dark or dark to light, depending on you know the colors, uh, the piece, and like I said, personal preference. I tend to find it easier to work from dark to light so instead of taking like a base tone color which will be around you know that color I what I did is I took I took this color and then I dark I changed the hue I shifted the hue a little bit and darkened it and gave it a little bit more saturation and came up with this color so I'll build from this color and that's this is 95% of the time this is what I do so I have that and I am going to protect that layer um, protect the alpha that was you know, good to be safe and I guess just to put this color kind of create like a swatch I'm just going to put it there and so now what I'm going to do is I'm not I'm not going to color on top of this I'm going to keep this separate and the next layer I'm going to start building the lights because this basically this tone is going to be I want this to be her darkest shade so 
Now I'm going to grab this color. Again, I'm going to shift the hue make it a little bit redder, make it lighter. And I'm just going to use the stock brushes. I'm just going to grab an airbrush um, with a fairly low opacity. And I'm going to make this layer a clipping mask. So it's clipping, um, it's clipping from the base shade skin. I'm just going to start building building light light source. So again, like I mentioned, the main light is going to be coming from from the right down. So um and I'm not going to start I'm going to start off with a soft edge, but I'm not going to start trying to, you know, do defining yet. I'm just going to do big big patches of light. Okay. Now that I laid that when I'm happy with it, with the overall uh, lighting, the first lighting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eraser brush and make sure it's soft brush. I'm going to put its opacity pretty much almost all the way down and just like it, I just like I did with with laying that color first now I'm gonna kinda start trimming away uh, trimming away that color revealing where the shading is gonna is gonna come in and since it's on its own separate layer, it, it's non-destructive. It's not going to affect this because it, it's clipping. So, so I got no around the eye, and it, it's always a good idea to work with a low opacity so you have more more control, and then only increase. Um, when you need it. Okay, and when I'm satisfied with that, um, if I just want to soften a little bit more, then I'll just grab the blur brush, again with a low opacity, in, and uh, I'm just kind of soft, but soften, soften it up. So again, right now it's, it's, it's going to look okay, but it's not going to look great. It's all going to be a, a layering process, and I'll even start to begin blending. So, got my airbrush. Still low opacity. I'm gonna grab this color and kind of go in between the base shade and this this color. Now, after having the soft shade shading in place what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a few sharp shaded edges so I'm going to have a hard eraser I'm going to increase the opacity a good bit and just kind of create See how it's it's still in the shade, but there's a so there's a hard edge within within this area. So usually I put I put these in areas where 
you know there's there's sharp there, there's angles you know where the shading can where well, the shading is usually really really sharp And I find this makes a pretty, pretty neat, nice, you know, added effect um, with depth when you do this. And it's real, real subtle. Okay, so I have those laid out and. Right now, I would just probably go back and forth and just uh, blending areas until I'm pretty happy. Because the thing is, I know I'm going to come back to these layers as I add stuff to it. So, try not to get hung on, you know. One of the one of your shading layers because you're gonna build build on top. And you can change. You can come back later and change it. So we have that. And the next thing I'm going to do is basically want to repeat what I just did, but with a lighter color, which is going to be like her main, I guess her main skin base color. So we have this as a starting point. Then we add it. We added this color. And this is how it look if I took off the clipping mask. This is how it, it looks unclipped. Okay, so we started with this. We ended it here. So now like I said we're going to go to the next color. And you want to get in the habit of when picking either a highlight or a shade is to shift shift the hue just a little bit and then pick what color you want. You just don't want to change the light, uh, light or dark value because then your your piece, unless you want to have like a non-living look, uh, then your piece will look dull and not as vibrant. Because take the skin, the skin is made up of many colors blue yellow blues yellows reds um, dark purplish reds um, it's, it's just the skin is <laughs> the skin is covered in all kinds of colors so you want to have it and they're all subtle they're all subtle colors but when they're all put together they mesh well. So I think I'm going to go with yeah, maybe a little bit lighter. Yeah, that'll do. And again, I am going to create a new layer, turn into a clipping mask. I'm going to pick my airbrush and like I said, do the same thing, but this time, this is going to kind of be more of the concentrated light. So it's not going, I'm not going to put it necessarily all over like that. I mean, this is, I guess, to say this is mainly, I'm concentrating this as the main light. And so lastly, what I'm going to do with the skin is I'm actually going to add the highlight. Now, when you add highlights, don't go with straight white. 
you always want to have some kind of color in it because highlights are affected by your surroundings so say if she was outside her highlights would be affected by the sky color even the ground color and say if it was you know a, a sunrise a very vibrant orange orange and purple colors then the highlight would have warmer tones in it so for highlights what I would do is take the base color which would be this color sample that and again I'm going to shift the hue to be a little more add a little more yellow and I'm going to pull it up I'm not going to go here. I'm going to go maybe like here. Like a good middle middle ground. Again, I'm going to add a layer. Clip that. And I'm going to test it. So, okay. There's nothing wrong with testing. Add it. Pull back. See how it looks. Okay. Desaturate a little bit more. That looks good. And and one thing that's good too about all these layers, but if if you keep them separate, is that you can you can change them. So say that's okay. So that's the base dark shade. So that base is the darkest color. Then you have a next shade later. Then you have the the main base color. Let's just say I want to take this color and it's too strong. I want to take it down. So I can change its opacity to fit where I want it to be. And also, by keeping it separate, you can change the hue all together. So you can create different, you know, palettes. So you know, I could this, this this could be a look for like a like a another form or something. So that's a good thing by keeping them separate. So honestly, don't be afraid to use layers. You know? So we have a highlight. Let me add it to the color palette. And of course still the key light I consider this part of the key light and I would even consider this kind of like the hot spots so still low opacity and we're just gonna hit we're just gonna hit certain areas Keep in mind that every area is going to have this highlight. You might just have a touch of it. So you don't have to, you know, overkill. And also, don't forget to flip your, your canvas every now and then as well. Flipping will show you, even in coloring, things that you might have missed. And also squinting. Squinting your eyes too is is very key. When you squint, things stand out. It's almost like you can also focus more on an area when you squint. So. Don't be afraid to squint. Make it a habit of squinting. And again, I'm going to take away and shape uh, shape the highlight, as well as blend blend it into the other colors where it needs to be. Okay, so for now I am 
Damn, right now, please, with the direction of the skin. Uh, whether I do a background or not, sometimes I will just add a, uh, a medium t medium tone background color, whether it, it whether it has a color in it or not. It's usually middle middle of the road, so I can see how the skin looks. Because when you're working with just playing with background, see how the skin looks changes. And so you can use this to kind of find a happy medium. Now, now if you're not going to put a background, then, you know, just work here. But sometimes I like to switch back and forth and figure out if I need to to saturate a little bit of one of the layers or desaturate and of course that's only if I have them separate if I don't have them separate then I lose a little bit of control but then there's curves which Metabane Pink has curves so but but now I'm happy with the colors so now what I'm gonna do is even though her skin looks pretty lively I'm going to add some color back into the skin with with mainly some reds and this is going to be a very subtle layer and basically I'm just going to hit I'm going to hit the, the shaded areas just hit them very generously very gen generously doesn't have to be pretty at all because we're going to use a uh, different blending mode or opacity if, if you don't have a blending mode. I'm just hitting over the shaded areas, not not the highlighted areas. I don't want to I don't want to add too much to the high, highlighted areas. Okay, so it's kind of a purplish red but this time I'm going to actually just make it red because what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do another layer but that one is going to be blue I'm going to put that one on top of the red layer. Okay. So then now what I'm going to do is turn off the blue, go to the red, and first I'm going to play with the blending mode. Let's see. Multiply overlay, put a dodge, mode, burn, hard light, soft light. Okay. You might go with soft light. And basically, you're just experiment, experimenting. So, I'm going to use soft light, and then I'm going to bring the opacity all the way down, turn it off. Then I'm gonna bring it up and put it in a happy spot, kind of right there. And you'll see, see turning up a little bit more, so you can see. So it's around 45% opacity. So as you see, with it on. Skin has a reddish, more reddish, reddish tint, slight reddish tint. If I turn it off, on, it, it puts color into the skin, which helps show that, hey, there's blood flowing. So, like I said, you want to keep it subtle. It doesn't have to be, like, way up here unless that's what you're going for. You just 
play with it, squint your eyes, you know, go with the the skin color that you want. And then it is based on it's based on the the color of the skin too. But you use this whether they're white, black, and and everything in between. So now I'm gonna do the same for the blue light. And so and that the red the red and blue, that's what I do for pretty much only the skin. And so pretty much at this point I'm just gonna repeat the whole process for the rest of, of her body. Uh, I'm gonna do the lips do the eyes and the clothing and the hair so what I'm gonna do is time lapse most of, most of that but I'm gonna come back when I'm working on coloring the eyes the lips and the hair or, you know or, or key key areas so see you in a little bit Now for the for the eyes the 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 white of our eyes are never it's never fully white not even close it's it they kind of have a warm hue and yellows in them and of course red but so what I did is I took skin color and then I just moved it around and found the color that I want. And there's usually a shadow that casts over the top of the eye. So I want to do that, but I will save that for, for last because it's going to cast over the whole eye. I'm going to come, come back, um, do the shading excuse me, the other white of the eyes after I do the color so so now the eye I'm going to just I'm going to take a neutral dark gray yeah neutral dark gray okay. and it's going to be the darkest part of the eye. Then I'm just going to move up, grab the next shade. Now I'm doing this purposely so I so you can kind of see me blend these colors together. And sometimes with the eye, I don't like to have it the blending too smooth. I like to have some texture to the eye. Okay, I'll go to. I think this would be the lightest because if I go in the lighter, it's really not going to matter. Okay, so I'm going to protect that that alpha, so I don't have to worry about going outside the lines. And I am going to at this point I would use one of my custom brushes, but I'm gonna go back to the airbrush, low opacity, and I'm just gonna start blending these colors together. Okay, so now what I did is, so I was happy with the blending, I changed the curves a little bit so that the color was more saturated. Um, then did a new new layer and added the, the pupil and put it on hard light. 
And now I have the I actually have the highlights drawn in, but most likely in the end, I'm just going to once I feel the highlights in, I'm going to remove their outline. I guess for now I'm just gonna go with this because um, we don't want to make the eyes too colorful because they aren't I mean you could do that but I know that's just something I don't want to do so I'm just gonna leave leave it like this for now I'm gonna go ahead and Add that cast shadow. Okay, so what I did for the lips, basically the same thing. A dark color, and then just added a added in the highlights one by one yep and I said that I had a little dark air around, around the lips and around the, the corners a little bit to uh, you know, make the lips feel like they are a part upper alright so next I'm just going to render out uh, the rest of her I'm gonna save the hair for last. For some reason, I usually save the hair for last because I'm still trying to think how I want to approach her hair since she has uh, curly, curly hair. She doesn't have straight hair. So I'm just gonna time lapse uh, the rest until until I get to a spot where I feel like you know I should stop and explain what I'm doing, especially if it's different. So. See you in a little bit again. Okay guys, um, getting close to the end, so I just want to tell you what I'm going to do next since what I have left is this little floof area and the hair and eyebrows. Um, and what I had decided to do is with the jacket and also the jeans is I used, I used two brushes that I customized. I, I made them for Metabang uh, usage. Uh, a custom watercolor and a custom hard brush. And I used those instead of the, the the airbrush because since these materials you know have a good bit of texture in them I use those brushes so so it added the textures because I don't know if I'm going to add the actual like jean texture or leather texture into this piece because sometimes I will do that I will take um, which I, I might do that um, probably for well I just have to see and then for this patch I just 
I just took like um uh what did I take? I took the the uh stipple or stipple pen, which is kind of like the old school airbrush that you would find in MS Paint, and I just tapped over and over and over to kind of create that how a, how a patch would look, because in because I, I was going to put it on a different blending layer, but I decided not to because a patch is like felt and it's not going to reflect a lot of light. So I didn't want to put too much light on it. So now what I'm going to do with the, I don't, I don't even know what the proper term, but I just call it floof. What I'm gonna do with that, with this, is um, I think I'm just going to go light to dark with this instead of dark to light because I'm not gonna do too much with this because it's light to begin with. And for the hair, since she has curly hair, I was thinking about going light to dark as well. So, because then I would just shape, shape the, the dark areas. And then after that, with the, the main coloring done, excuse me, I'll go into the last bit, which is, you know, refining stuff, like maybe adding a, a gradient overlay to the whole body, which if I do that then I would do um, I would use I'm probably gonna stick to the two the red and the green colors or if not I'll use maybe a warm color to hit the mids and, and highlights er, highlighted areas and a blue to hit the, the shadows uh, you know just to make it pop a little more and then I'm also going to color the lines as well. And then also remove remove any extra lines or or color them in to where they're barely visible. I'm trying to think and of course add any final highlights and then add the backfill rim light. And that'll be it I believe so I will see y'all at the end Okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Yep. I just, uh, all I did was just, you know, the last few touches that I said I was going to do. Along with some gradient, small gradient effects. So, uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that's just a little breakthrough, breakdown. I should say of how I digitally color with using Metabang uh, with the uh, I guess this style of coloring so yeah this is just a little breakdown of how I color this kind of coloring style so hopefully any of it helps and hope you guys have a good rest of your day or night and I will catch 
you guys later.